Now, I just did my review of the Surface Pro 9 in both the Intel and ARM variants. That's the one with the 5G. If you didn't see it, I'll leave a link in the description below. But if you want a more affordable option that doesn't skimp on some of the premium features, check out today's review. Yes, it's the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, brand new for 2022. And I gotta say, they bring a lot of the nice features you like in the Surface Pro 9, although there are some features that are missing that I think would put this over the edge. We're gonna find out today just exactly what you can expect. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, brand new for 2022. Coming up. Today's video is brought to you by Best Buy. Now, I've teamed up with Best Buy to bring you some of the great Black Friday deals here for 2022. Now, Black Friday is almost upon us. You don't want to miss out on these. Let's get right to it. Now, first up is one that I'm going to actually be reviewing in the next couple of days. I'm almost done with the review. It's the HP Omen 16. It's a 16.1 inch QHD gaming laptop running a 12th gen Core i9 12900H. Really nice stuff here. $1449 for the asking price right now. That's $270 off the initial asking price. And if you're in the market for a gaming laptop, this is one you're going to want to look at. And so far, based on my testing, it's a really good one. Next up is one of my favorites here for 2022. I reviewed it earlier this year. It's the Lenovo Yoga 9i 14-inch 2-in-1 convertible laptop. It has a gorgeous 2.8K OLED display. It comes with the pen. That's a really good deal here. It's built upon the Evo platform. It has the Core i7-1260p. That's a powerful processor. We looked at it in depth. It's on sale right now for $1199.99. That's $300 off the initial asking price. Now, if you saw my review of the Surface Pro 9, my overall takeaway is it's overpriced for what you're getting, not much of an upgrade over the one we see here, the Surface Pro 8. And I recommended everybody to check out the Surface Pro 8, especially because you can get it on sale. And that's exactly what we see here from Best Buy. The Core i5 model from last year in that Surface Pro 8, $899.99. And the good part about this is it includes the keyboard cover at that $899.99 price. So people, let me know what you think about these deals. There are some other deals that I didn't have time to get to, but I might have to do another video as more deals pop up as we get closer to Black Friday. So stay tuned, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and make sure you hit that notification bell. You don't wanna miss it, especially when I'm bringing you these great savings from Best Buy. And I wanna thank Best Buy for sponsoring today's video. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Dell. I'm not being sponsored by Dell. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and Dell is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is on loan from Dell, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. All right, let's talk pricing right off the bat. And that's because this comes in as tested here today, $1,099 even. And that includes the keyboard folio and the XPS stylus. And if you want the Core i7, that's only $100 more. And when you compare it to a similarly specced out Surface Pro 9, that comes in at $1,679.98, including the signature type cover and the Slim Pen 2. This is a significant savings if you go with the XPS 13 2-in-1. There's no doubt about it. And that Surface Pro 9 has only 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. If you want 512, you're going to pay even more. And as usual, I'll leave links for everything in the description below. For the latest pricing, make sure you check out those links. Now, when it comes to the build and the finish on this, it is excellent. This is an all metal design with the sky blue finish. It's absolutely gorgeous, rock solid with no give or flex in the chassis. Now, this is a very thin and light device. And even with the folio keyboard cover and the pen, it's still light enough to take with you on the go. Portability is the name of the game. And if you go with the optional 5G, which I don't know if it's available just yet, that's going to be great for the road warrior who wants to get work done on the road and have that always on connection. This is a great portable package. 
Okay, let's check out the port selection. And there really is very limited parts on this. You get two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. Now, there's no headphone jack. There's no USB-A port. But they do give you the adapters in the box for both. And that's a nice value add as well. Now, of course, I still would prefer to have a headphone jack on this and even a USB-A port. But we don't get that here in 2022. I think OEMs are moving away from that. So having those adapters without having to buy them as separate accessories to me is a real win here on the right side there's just a speaker grill no other ports on that side and on the top are your volume buttons as well as your power button as well which also doubles as a fingerprint scanner and just like the surface pro 9 limited port selection here now, one of the biggest surprises is just how much I like this Folio keyboard cover. I think it's a must-have accessory here because you want to be able to do typing on this. You want to be able to be productive. And just like the Surface Pro 9 with its signature keyboard cover, this, again, is a must-have accessory. Now, one big difference here is there's no raised typing angle like you'd get with the Surface Pro 9. You don't get that here. But having said that, the keyboard on this, to me, is superior. The keys are really very similar to what we get with the XPS 13 plus that i reviewed earlier this year and that's a good thing because the tactility is excellent as well as the key travel now the touchpad is one of my favorites on a two-in-one detachable it's spacious it's bigger than the surface pro 9's keyboard cover and it also has really good responsiveness when it comes to scrolling and when it comes to gestures it's excellent now, if there is a negative with the keyboard folio is the fact that you're limited to three angles, whereas the Surface Pro 9 has that kickstand giving you much more angles in terms of viewability and so forth. So that is an advantage for the Surface Pro 9. Is it worth all that extra money to have that kickstand? Well, for some, maybe. For some, maybe not. Now, for me, I got used to the three angles. One is a very upright angle. One is sort of in between. And then the other one is a little bit better in terms of the best viewing angle. But again, it doesn't compare with that Surface Surface kickstand. Now, next year, if this had that kickstand similar to what we get on a Surface Pro device, this would be killer. So hopefully in the next iteration, we'll get a Surface style kickstand. But having said that, this keyboard folio cover is excellent when it comes to typing and the overall experience with it has been great. And to me, the star of the show has to be its gorgeous display. It's a 13-inch display with the same resolution as a Surface Pro 9, 2880 by 1920. That means this has 266 pixels per inch, and it has a 3 to 2 aspect ratio. That's the same as a Surface Pro 9. The only difference here is you're limited to 60 hertz, whereas in the Surface Pro 9, that has a dynamic refresh rate up to 120 hertz. But having said that, having that extra refresh rate means you're going to eat more battery life. Life. And to me, I'd rather have the better battery life or more battery life and stick with the 60 hertz than have the high refresh rate and have to deal with charging it midday. But as far as this display itself is concerned, you get the really deep blacks, the really vibrant colors, the excellent contrast. Check out that 1490 to one. That's really good. Low Delta E score 1.04. Very color accurate. And it has decent coverage of the color gamut. You're looking at 100% sRGB. So this is a really good total package here in terms of the display. Now, this is a 10-point multi-touch display that was very responsive, and it has pen support. Now, if you get the XPS stylus, which I do recommend, it's really a great value here because you're going to be able to take notes, sketch out diagrams or digital artwork when you need it, and it also stores and charges on the top of the unit. It sticks magnetically. It's pretty secure, but I think if you're going to go traveling, put it in a pocket inside your bag. You don't want it falling off, but it's secure enough when you're using it for productivity work. Now, the connection to that keyboard cover is really strong, and using it as a tablet has been really good. That 3 to 2 aspect ratio, I think, is perfect, allowing you to take notes, sketch out diagrams, artwork, as I mentioned. Now, when using it as a tablet, that camera bump does protrude out a little bit, so you will notice it. Something to keep in mind. Now, this is the front-facing camera on the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. What we're looking at here is an IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition, Worked well, setup was easy, again, working really, really well. But what this also has is a fingerprint scanner on the power button, which doubles as the fingerprint scanner, something the Surface Pro 9 doesn't have. Now, this camera is really good. Now, this is 1440p video, so it's a 5 megapixel camera here. And on the back, you can do 4K video. We'll show that in a moment. 
But if you're video conferencing, doing Zoom calls and stuff like that, this is a really good choice. Now, it also has some special features as well. You can blur the background with some background effects, uh, such as what you're seeing now. I'm blurring the background. It has eye contact. It has auto framing. It has all these really nice bells and whistles when it comes to video conferencing. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. Here it is next to the Surface Pro 9. In terms of that video quality, what do you think about it? Let me know in that comment section below. But keep in mind, the Surface Pro 9 with 5G has that NPU or the neural processing unit to help with certain extra features. But this also has very similar features in terms of blurring the background, doing all kinds of effects and stuff. It all is here. So that's been pretty good as well. So this is the rear-facing camera on the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. This is 4K video, people. What do you think about it in terms of the video quality and the audio quality? Let me know. So this is an outdoor shot of my dog here in my backyard. You can see the pool, jacuzzi, little sitting area. We're just starting renovation on the backyard now. We've finished pretty much the inside of the house. But So what do you think about this video quality and the audio quality 4K video? Let me know in the comments section below. Again, I don't really use tablets for photos or videos, but again, in a pinch, it could certainly handle something. But again, in a pinch, it might be good if you're a surveyor. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Now, when it comes to user upgradability, nothing is upgradable here. The RAM is soldered into the motherboard, and they're using LPDDR4X RAM. Now, my review unit has 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the Surface Pro 9, by the way, uses LPDDR5X RAM, so that's a little bit of a difference there. Not a big deal. It works fine. And as far as the SSD is concerned, that is also not user upgradable, unlike the Surface Pro 9, which allows you to upgrade the SSD. And it uses M.2 PCIe Gen 4 storage. And as you can see from these reads and writes, pretty decent, although not the fastest Gen 4 speeds we've seen. Definitely fast enough for what this device is meant to do. All right, let's talk about performance. And the XPS 13 2 in 1 9315 has the Core i5 1230U. As you know, that is a 10 core processor from Intel. That's eight efficiency cores and two performance cores. And as you can see, when you compare it to the Surface Pro 9, which has the Core i5 1235U, a little bit higher clock speed, the performance actually is step in step with the Surface Pro 9, maybe slightly less, but not noticeably better or worse. It's actually on par with the Surface Pro 9, which is impressive here, considering you're getting this at a significantly less amount of money that you'd have to pay for a Surface Pro 9 that is similarly equipped. Now, as far as the multi-core score, pretty good. As far as the single core, pretty good. Definitely an improvement over the Surface Pro 8 from last year, as you can see year over year, in terms of these Intel processors from 11th gen to 12th gen. Everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, it all worked well. I wouldn't do any 4K high-end video editing on this, but maybe some 1080p video editing here and there when you need it in a pinch this can do it and as far as gaming is concerned i think you pretty much know this is not a gaming laptop with its integrated iris xe graphics but you can get somewhat playable frame rates if you lower some of the settings on some of the titles but don't expect to play triple a titles on their highest settings it's not going to work here now, one thing to note because it has two thunderbolt 4 ports you have the option of adding an external gpu now one, thing to know, now, one thing you'll be happy about is you won't have to contend with any fan noise on this. That's because this is passively cooled. There are no fans in this. And it never got overly hot in terms of the surface temperatures, which was a little bit surprising. I was expecting this to overheat coming into this. But they did a good job on the passive cooling, venting it. And I think we're seeing pretty decent performance considering there's no fans here. And if you're a productivity person, you won't have to contend with any fan noise. I think that's a win-win. And when it comes to the battery life, this sports a three cell 49.5 watt hour battery and it did eight hours and 57 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. What does that mean in real world mixed usage? You can expect anywhere from six to seven hours depending on what you're doing. And that's pretty much on par with the Surface Pro 8 we saw from last year, but that's running at 120 hertz. Probably could do a little bit better if you bump it down to 60 hertz. It's on par pretty much with the Surface Pro 9, although that did better in the 5G model with that SQ3, not a surprise there, but decent battery life nonetheless. But if you do need to plug in, the very compact 45 watt power adapter that is included in the box takes about 90 minutes to give you a full charge, not too shabby. 
And the other big surprise here is how good the stereo speakers on this. It has Waves Max Audio, and there are two two watt speakers for a four watt total, filling up a room really nicely. Decent mids, decent bass, and overall good volume. Good job on that front. Okay, folks, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Dell XPS 13 2 in 1 here for 2022? And I got to say, Dell hit a home run here in the sense that they made a more affordable alternative to the Surface Pro 9, and they get a lot right here in this first go around. The only thing that I think is missing here is a Surface Kickstand. If this had the Surface Kickstand, this, as I said earlier, would kick ass. But it's great nonetheless. Surprisingly good here, folks. Love the bright, sharp 3 to 2 display. With the same 2.8k resolution 2880 by 1920 premium build sleek looks optional 5g i forgot to mention that you can get this with 5g 5 megapixel ir webcam 11 megapixel rear camera look pretty good powerful speakers nice folio keyboard cover it is fanless it's silent you don't have to contend with fan noise two thunderbolt four ports this is less expensive than the surface pro 9 more comfortable keyboard cover in my opinion negatives just the two USB ports, no headphone jack is a big no-no in my book. Folio has limited angles, as I talked about. Keyboard lies flat, and there's no integrated kickstand, as I mentioned. But overall, this is an excellent value when you compare it to a similarly equipped Surface Pro 9, making this my editor's choice here for 2022 on the detachable two-in-one category category definitely making the Dell XPS 13 two-in-one here for 2022 worth your money. So what do you think about the XPS 13 2-in-1? I think it's a really nice alternative to the Surface Pro 9. The key difference is, of course, you don't get that iconic kickstand. It would have been killer if this had it, although I do like that folio keyboard cover that is offered with the XPS 13 2-in-1. Although it is limited in terms of those positions because, again, it doesn't have that Surface-style kickstand. Just something to bear in mind. And it does have the same great display, 13 inches, 2880 by 1920, that 3 to 2 aspect ratio, same as the Surface Pro 9. With the one big difference, of course, it doesn't have that dynamic refresh rate up to 120 hertz, but that's not a huge deal to me for this type of device, but it would have been nice to have it. Again, you are saving money with the Dell over the Microsoft offering, but I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.